All right, today we're gonna check out the new update to the InMotion app for our smartphones. Um, today we're gonna be looking at iOS in particular. There is a new version for Android as well. You can find links to both versions of the app on our website. I will link it in the description. So, first of all, like I said, it's an update. So this is the same app, but it has been updated to support the new V10 that you can see here sitting in the background. A full list of writables that this new app supports is also in the description. Notably, we're going to be talking about electric unicycles today mostly. It does support the Solowell Glide 3 and Glide 2, as well as the Inmotion V8 and V5. So some of those new features do carry over, but there are some new features in this app specific to the V10 and V10F only. All right, so when you fire up the app, you're gonna see, it's gonna start searching for a list of vehicles that have a Bluetooth connection available and on. So I'm gonna pick the V10 here, just for demonstration purposes. It's searching, it found it, it's connected. All right, so this is the main screen. You're gonna see, this is the main dashboard view, and here is the speedometer. Um, and it's like a little speed dial here that goes around. It's going to show you a variety of different stats, but um, the main thing to notice is there's a dial here. As you speed up, it's going to move up just like it would on a car, and uh, what you'll notice is there's a color that trails behind it. When you're moving forward and accelerating, you're going to find that the dial is going to be colored orange. There's going to be a trail of orange behind it. Um, as you're slowing down, braking, or going down a hill, it's going to turn green. Now the difference in the color is actually indicating whether or not you're regenerating power or using power. So when it's green, that means you're regenerating power and it's going back into the battery. Whenever it's orange, that means you're accelerating and you're using power from the battery. So it's a quick little uh, visual to let you know exactly what's going on with your battery. It's pretty cool. And then there's also a compass here too for the directionally challenge. It's going to give you a quick heads up which way you're facing. Um, here is an estimated range remaining from your current battery charge and right now it's showing 56.4 for me. Um, I've got about 90% battery left. Like I said, it's an estimation. It can't possibly know whether or not you're going to be um, writing very um, hard or fast. Or it doesn't know what your load is. It doesn't know how steep of a hill you're going to climb. So again, it's an estimation under great conditions. One nice little shortcut on the main dashboard here is a uh, swipe up and that's going to turn on your headlight really quick and it toggles it off whenever you do that again. So again, swipe up. Cool. Swipe down is a horn feature. It's going to make a little beep sound. So if you want to warn pedestrians that are in front of you, a little beep beep doesn't hurt. Okay, and of course, there's also the main settings dial up here in the top right. This brings you to a full featured list of the detailed settings for the vehicle that you have connected. These features will depend on what connect what vehicle you have connected to the app at, at any given time. They are still working on adding some more features to this app. Um, these will update um, by the internet without having to update the app in time. You'll start to see more show up here as they become available. Right now you can see the diagnose feature. This will let you troubleshoot any problems you think you might be having with your wheel. And whenever you run that, you can also upload those logs to InMotion's engineer to give them a clue as to what might be wrong with your wheel. So, um, of course, you can reach out to us for any help you need. If you're having any issues, we're happy to help. Um, backing back out, you'll see um, the light effects. Now, this is referring to the lights on the side of the wheel. So, this is a feature that works for both Glide 3, V8, and uh, V10 as well. So going into here, if you're familiar with the old version of the app, it's the same um, type of feature. A list of presets here, you'll see some of these are in Chinese. Um, down here are the custom um, DIY patterns that you have created. I've got only a few on here. If you do DIY at the top corner, this is the light program function. So this is the full array of the side of your wheel and um, down here it's a frame by frame animation so if you haven't used this before this is a really cool feature if you want to spend some time to really customize the look of your wheel at night um, when you tap on the dots here on the side it brings up a color palette um, from the color palette you can choose from a list of preset colors or you can create your own color here um, confirm and now that i've chosen a color i can place them anywhere on the side of the wheel that i want Again, this is just one frame at a time. So um, once you confirm your colors, I'm gonna put a few in there. Look at that um, hideous 
uh, color combination I've chosen there. Nice. All right. Okay. Once you're satisfied there, you can, um, you're done with frame one, add a new frame, starting over with a new frame. So again, you're going to choose a color that you want for this frame, place them wherever you want. Lovely. Of course, you can spend a lot more time to actually make this an attractive design. Um, I've only created two frames here, but you can choose the speed of the animation between those frames right here with this main slider. Um, you can even preview your current progress and look at that. Again, that would translate to your wheel. If you're done, you can save it and apply it and it will eventually show up right down here once you've saved that and then you can apply it to your wheels. So cool little feature there. If you've never used it before, now you know how. This is a toggle switch that lets you um, turn off your side lights if you want to keep them off, if you want to keep them on. The maximum speed slider here. Most of our products out of the box when it's brand new um, will be speed limited by the slider here. So I know a lot of our experienced riders on electric unicycles, if you've just gotten a V10 and you've ridden before, you're probably going to want to bump that up. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that's one of the first things a lot of people are going to do. Of course, you want to be careful when you fall at those higher speeds, of course, you're going to have a rougher time. So you know, be warned, you don't want to fall at that speed. Of course, each product doesn't have the same top speed. So the V10 top speed, 25. If you have your Glide 3 connected, it's going to be at a slower top speed. You won't have the ability to go to 25. So it's, it's dependent on the wheel that you have connected. Now the L8F and the P1F, that's the electric bike and the electric scooter, those two will also come speed limited out of the box. You can adjust that top speed, but after six miles of riding time. After the six miles, you're able to move the slider up and get the full maximum speed out of it. The standby time, this is the amount of time it, that will pass before it will automatically um, turn it, power itself off so you don't waste your battery. Now, this is another cool V10, um, V10F exclusive feature here. Now, this one will not work for V8 or Glide 3 or lower. Uh, the footboard sensitivity is referring to how stiff your wheel feels. And that's a common term used um, with electric unicycle riders. It's referring to, to how flat the pedal remain whenever you lean forward. A stiff pedal means that the pedal is going to remain perfectly flat whenever you lean forward. Um, a softer pedal means it's gonna have a little bit of give. It's gonna lean a little bit with you. We're now allowing you to adjust it in a very fine-tuned way. So you'll see here it's from uh, all the way down to 2048 all the way up to 4096. So that's your range of adjustment here and everyone's gonna like something a little bit different. Now what's really unique about the way InMotion has implemented it for the V10 is that it's um, a little bit more of an organic soft feel. It's not a slow wave-like adjustment. It's, it's, like a, it's like a tight spring. So it's a subtle effect, but it's a very meaningful effect. Um, if you ask me what I prefer, I like it pretty soft down here. It's still a very stable, very very stable ride. It's it's not unsettling, but it's just soft enough to make it more comfortable and a little bit more fun to kind of throw around because when it leans with you just a little bit, it allows you to get ahead of the wheel just, just enough to feel like you can kind of throw your weight in front of it to get a little bit more fun acceleration out of it. So personal preference. All right, and volume, that's the master volume setting. So. If you want all of your alerts to be really loud, you can crank it up. If you want them to be non-existent or quiet, you know, bump it down. All right, the handle button feature here. Now this is referring to the kill switch underneath the handle. So that function uh, is very handy for most people. It allows you to just pick up the wheel while it's still powered on and not have the motor spin out. So if there's any reason you don't want that function to work and you want to disable that kill switch, you can turn this off. All right, now we're gonna jump into vehicle correction. So what you're gonna see first here is the pedal horizontal adjustment. That's really just referring to the angle of the pedals. Um, this is another personal preference thing. So if you prefer your pedals to be tilted forward a little bit while you're riding, you're gonna, you're gonna bump it up. If you want the pedals to be tilted back, then you're gonna bump it back. Now the turning and forwarding adjustment setting, this is more of a calibration and what this is referring to, many electric unicycle riders are going to be familiar with what I'm about to talk about here. When you're turning on an electric unicycle, especially on a sharper turn, you can feel the pedals tip forward a little bit. 
Um, it's something that people sometimes get used to, but really it's not an optimal writing stance and it feels a little uneasy. So it feels a lot better whenever they stay flat. And this is actually something that InMotion has been uh, really, really excellent in, especially with the V8 and the Glide 3. One of the highlights of that wheel is that they were able to maintain such a flat pedal, especially when turning and cornering. Now, if you ever feel like it's drifting out of that, you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna calibrate using this turning and forwarding adjustment. So now this is available for um, those wheels and the V10 and uh, V10F. So if you just try to calibrate, you're gonna say, hey, what's going on? Adjustment failed. So the reason why is you need to actually prep your wheel before you run this calibration. What you're gonna wanna do is um, take the wheel while it's powered on um, you're going to keep it upright while it's powered on and you're going to use that uh, motor kill switch that we were just talking about, the handle button. You're going to grab that so that the motor is no longer self-balancing and then you're going to tilt it back and you're going to rest it on the case um, while it's tilted back. Once you have that balanced and it's upright, now you're going to go back to the setting and you're going to run this adjustment, only this time it's not going to fail. It. And as soon as you do that, you're going to lift the wheel back upright and it's going to be self-balancing again. If you ever feel your pedals tilting forward while you're turning, this is your magic answer right there. Firmware upgrade, this is the very last option down here. We, we don't tend to release a lot of firmware updates. It's not something necessary at all. If there's ever a critical firmware update, um, that InMotion uh, ever feels its customers need to implement, we will of course let you know. Now it's time to dive a little deeper into these dashboard settings, those live stats that power users are gonna really enjoy. There's four pages here. Um, the first one is trip odometer here, so this trip mileage, average speed for this trip, um, the maximum speed for this trip, so you know, those peak speeds, you're gonna, you're gonna get that readout there. Um, the duration of this trip, so I've had this wheel powered on now and connected to the app for an hour and a half. Um, the average power, so that's measured in watts. Um, obviously, this motor is capable of 2,000 watts sustained, but it can peak way above that right now. <laughs> it's only averaging 9 watts because I have it leaning up against the stand, and it's, not, it's barely even having to self-balance itself. Uh, but the 12 watts is the maximum watts that it's had to uh, output to keep itself in its current position. And uh, obviously when you're writing, that's going to be much, much higher. Uh, now the battery percent, that's just a live stat of the battery. Um, that's reflecting the voltage, of course. So, you know, if you are writing in conditions that's causing the voltage to drop a little bit, you might get a temporary change in that that shows a little bit less of an estimation. <clears throat> and the main board life temperature. So, you know, for, for you power riders, uh, hill climbers, mountain climbers, <laughs> they're taking their unicycles in extreme conditions. This is a good live readout for you to kind of get uh, an idea of, of where you're at with the temperature. Now the V10F does have an active cooling system in it, so it does a really good job of keeping it nice and cool. But if you wanna know where you're at, there you go. Um, and this is the, that's your odometer. We've only done 89 miles on this one. It's, it's a new production model V10F, so we haven't done a ton of miles on it yet. Swipe left again, and now we're at the graph view. So the graph view is really cool because it's giving you a live graph view of uh, four different stats here. We've got the power measured in watts and the speed measured in uh, miles per hour, energy consumption, this is the efficiency, of your writing and the temperature. Here you've got the average energy consumption. Now this is a really cool number that you're looking at here. This is measured in watt hour per, per kilometer. Essentially you're getting um, an average of, of, of your writing habits here. So in, in my case for this wheel, we have not ridden it very aggressively, um, just some kind of testing around the office, nothing, nothing crazy. So uh, this one is averaging at 26.3 watt hours per kilometer that we've ridden it. So, you know, you can kind of do some basic math there if you want to see, well, if that's my average and, uh, and this is my normal writing habits is like 26.3, you can tell about how, how much you're normally going to get, uh, you know, a uh, range out of it. You, you can kind of start to kind of estimate and as you maybe develop different writing habits or use different um, different paths to to work or wherever you're writing, you can start to to kind of get an idea of which which uh, locations are more challenging um, in terms of energy consumption. So 
this is an interesting number too. So this is a total power dissipation measured in watt hours. That's actually, that's actually telling you right there um, how much you've pulled from the battery in total for the lifetime of this wheel. I'd say the most interesting numbers to keep an eye on here in this graph view for energy consumption are the total average energy consumption, that's the lifetime of the wheel, and this is the trip average energy consumption right down here on the bottom right. So let's say you are testing out um, a very challenging writing scenario and you fire up the app and you want to see what your efficiency is compared to your average. So, you know, in theory, your, your stressful run would have um, a much higher average energy consumption for that trip compared to your total average of the lifetime of the wheel. And then right here is going to give your max energy consumption. That's the, the highest peak. Um, and that's also going to show up in your graph view here. So you might want to keep an eye on that. I do want to show you one more really cool bonus feature here for that is exclusive to V10, V10F. That is a, an additional dashboard view. When you rotate the phone into landscape mode, it's going to automatically kind of pop into um, this alternate view here. It's really beautifully designed. It's got this viewport in the middle. At default, it's set to just the speed here, but depending on which um, option you choose here, if you tap on uh, the total current, it's going to give you a live graph view of the speed and the total live current. Um, this one is for torque. Uh, this one is for acceleration in meters per second. And this one is another a live temperature view for the main board. So. Lots of cool stuff in here as well. It's going to switch automatically back to the regular dashboard view whenever you bring it back into, up into uh, portrait. All right, so that is the new update for the InMotion app for iOS that gives support to V10 and V10F. You can reach out to us at myinmotion.com for sales and support or any questions you might have. All right, guys, ride safe.